Howdy, folks. Welcome to a world of fantasy with seven magical lands of timeless fun. The Magic Kingdom, where happily ever afters happen every day. Welcome to the WDW Reflections Podcast. So let's go ahead and switch gears and head to our next segment. This is a little something we like to call What's Happening Now in Walt Disney World. And this one's a big one. I'm sure you guys probably already took a peek at some of the news stories that came out. Uh, just They just released this yesterday as we're recording this this morning. So this week, the Walt Disney Company released further details about the upcoming release of the system that will replace the FastPass Plus. There are two specific categories for this system. They're calling it Genie Plus, and then the second part is the individual attraction selection. So just to remind the listeners, the Genie Plus is the system that will allow guests to select a return time to ride an attraction by using that ride's lightning lane. So the lightning lane, basically the same location that used to be the FastPass Plus, but they're just renamed it lightning lane. So for the Genie Plus, let's talk about that part first. There are 46 attractions on the list. Obviously, I'm not just going to sit here and read a 46 item list to you guys, but I did just take a few of the highlights. Rides such as Haunted Mansion and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at Magic Kingdom, Kilimanjaro Safaris and Dinosaur at Animal Kingdom, Test Track and Soren over at Epcot Center, and Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run and Tower of Terror all over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. All of those are on that list of 46 attractions. To utilize the Genie Plus service, it's going to cost you $15 per day per person. So basically, either you're going to stand on the standby for everything you do, or you can pay $15 per person per day, and you can use the Genie Plus system to make reservations for you or for your party and go through the lightning lane. So you can make your first Lightning Lane reservation starting at 7 a.m. on the day of your park visit. So no more. I, you guys remember you could make Fast Pass reservations like months in advance. That's gone. No more of that. You have to do it the same day. You can only reserve one attraction at a time through Genie Plus. Unless this is it's kind of a little, a little confusing. Unless your first attraction is at least two hours away. So if you set up, if you're really wanting to get on, you know, something and but their first reservation for it isn't until, say, 6 p.m. that day, then you can make a second one and maybe get on something sooner. If you buy Genie Plus for your trip or you can you can do it individual days, you don't have to do it for the full length of stay. You can only do one at a time. Like I said, you can begin that at 7 a.m., but you can only ride the attractions with the Genie Plus, meaning that if you want to go on a certain ride twice, then you have to ride or you have to stand in the standby lane. You can't use Genie Plus on the same attraction two times. So if, say, you, you get on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, you use Genie Plus for it, that one's grayed out. You can't use it for, you can't use another lightning lane for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. You only get to choose one attraction one time per day. So anything else, if you want to ride Big Thunder Mountain Railroad again, go for it, but you're in the standby lane. You have to choose another attraction. So, so that's Genie Plus. You guys want to discuss that for a second? What do you guys think about? First of all, that's, that's a lot of words that I just said. That's a, it's almost like the rules that I implied upon to myself for that, for our lists. There's a lot of rules that you got to follow to use this Genie Plus thing. I, I, well, I, I guess my big beef with it is they want you to pay an extra $15 and you're not even guaranteed, but two rides. I, I didn't, I thought it was one ride because you have to, but if you schedule, you could schedule one out two hours and then schedule another. So you, you're guaranteed to get on two rides quickly. And then if, but then if you go to schedule they for anything after that, there's a large, in a, in a crowded day, 
I would assume there's going to be a large possibility that you're not going to get any more schedules out there. Well, you know, you remember kind of like the old system. Once you the old system, you, know, you can make three. And then once you were had used the fast pass for your third one, then you could book another one. Kind of the same no, thing. No, here. I get that, but but on a crowded day, don't think those are going to fill up prior to you being able. I guess everybody's on the same system though, so I guess they won't fill up because you can't. I don't know. It just it still doesn't feel good to me. I'll put it that way. Well, it doesn't feel good to me either, be, just because it's so expensive. I right. mean, that's that's if you're talking about a, a five day trip or whatever. And say a family of four, which I have, I'll just use my family as an example. That's $60 per day. And if I'm going to do that for five days, that's more math than I'm capable of. But that's a lot of money. Yeah. You know, also a lot for the average consumer to take in, be able to get on a ride, be able to get the time you want, be able to get the ride that you want. I, I also have been thinking about something when we discussed G Genie Plus, I should have brought this up then. Last year, when I went to Galaxy's Edge, where they had the advanced re reservation system for Rise of the Resistance, the nightmare that that was able to do this, and we were lucky enough. We got it. We 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 had three of us trying at the same time, and and one of us was actually able to get through and do it. Thankfully, because it would have been a disaster otherwise. But something that I haven't seen anybody mention really on, on blogs or anything or, or on videos, but I experienced this when I was there. The lines at the complaint desks were enormous. I mean, they're, the, these at the uh, customer service lines were wrapped all around uh, pretty much the park at different spots because these were people really? who had gotten there early, tried to get on the ride and weren't able to. So they were trying to either get a pass to return or a pass to to make up for it because you know the ride was still new then when i when i had gone and so that, that's the only thing i can imagine those folks were online for because the lines were just i'd never seen disney customer service lines extend that far out and no one's even talked about it or said anything now just imagine every single ride is now tied into a system that's reliant on your phone and uh you went in, in your, with the idea that you i don't know do about your ride. guys's phone but but when i do that stuff my phone inevitably freezes the battery up. Or, or even something. it'll freeze it's, up or the battery or, and now they sell, they have these stations in throughout the park that you can buy these little cells that are rechargeable that you put in your battery. But yeah. my wife and my nephew had, were using it during that trip and it wound down so quickly that they had to keep going back to the station to get a refurbished one. So I don't know. I think this is too much reliance on the technology in this particular sense. I don't know if it's going to work and I think it's going to create kind of a, a public relations nightmare because there are going to be a lot of people who expect to go. If you're paying all this extra money, you're expecting to get on these rides and there's a possibility that you won't the possibility that you won't be able to get anywhere near as many rides as you could have in the past with either fast pass or just standing there. Great. Look, I'm, I'm going to get on my, my soapbox here for a second. You know, as, as a society, we're already on our devices too much the way it is already. Uh, as a high school teacher, I'm telling you, it is a daily battle to get kids off of their phones. Like in my classroom, I literally have to, I have a sign up in the front of the room and it's, it's, I call it a red zone or a green zone. If the sign is red, I better not see your phone. And if I do, it's an automatic office referral. I, there's no questions asked. I'm, if I see your phone in your hand, I just point at you and say, office referral, put it away. And that's it. You, I mean, it is, it's a battle. So I, I'm kind of with you, Tony. We're already on our phones too much. And now we're going to rely almost on an hourly basis, at least having to use our phones to just go make a new new reservation every time we want to do another one for this genie plus add to that like what you're saying about the batteries which i don't know do you think it's a coincidence that disney knows that using this system is going to drain your battery and they know they have these kiosks where you can pay for battery chargers gee i don't know you think that's connected and and then let's talk about their wi-fi 
Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many people trying to get on the Wi-Fi oh, at the same goodness, time. Yeah. It's not always reliable. Uh, this is a, a old guy, me complaining about everything changing, but it it's got it's it's got a lot to do to prove to me that it's not going to be a complete nightmare. It just sounds like it's got a lot of hiccups. You're not, you're not really you're not really complaining in the old guy sense because we've got real world experience. I mean, what happened last year with, with uh, trying to get onto that ride was really scary. I mean, we really didn't know. We all woke up extremely early. I think with six o'clock to try to get to the park as early as possible to try to get through the gates in order to be able to be there the moment that, that you were allowed to, to sign in to do that. I know they changed the system after that, but that was really harrowing. I mean, we, we had a little boy with us and, you know, we wanted to make sure that he got to get on this ride. And that was the whole purpose for us going to the strip. It was a once in a lifetime thing for all the four of us to get there. And just to be able to, to think about, um, am I going to be able to get through was the scariest thing. I and mean, I, I thought I was getting through and my, my phone was swirling. My nephew was trying to get through. He didn't even know what to do. My, my <laughs> wife thankfully was able to somehow, she was like, I got it. And you know, that, that, and then you, you look around and you see all the disappointed people who weren't able to do it. I, and just imagine with this system, it's just going to create that kind of a nightmare. It's, it's taking away from the joy of, of being there. Vacation is meant to get away from the, the daily, you know, the, the stress of daily life. You're supposed to go to relax. You don't relax on a Disney trip. You, you know, you just don't. You're spending too much money to relax. Yeah. This is just adding to that. So do you think this know. is a, more of a relief from pre planning your rides? Like, for instance, that was another thing we had a, before going on this trip, even though it was only for two days in the parks. We had to literally figure out, okay, we're going to go on this one at this hour. We're going to go on this one at that hour. We had to have all that planned out so that you can figure out when you're going to have a meal, when you're going to have this. So now you've got this system where you have to kind of rely on everybody else all doing that at the same time, on the same day, at the same minute. I don't know. It just sounds like it's going to create a nightmare. And just think about this. You you can't make your Genie Plus reservations until the day of. But you can make dining reservations, Mm -hmm. you know, months in advance. So you might make a reservation for or priority seating. I think it's what Disney calls it. You might make a priority seating for a a restaurant. I don't just throw something out there, something, say, the Coral Reef or whatever at Epcot. You might make a priority seating for that. But you might be you're going to be freaking out if you're in a standby line for an attraction or and you're going to miss that or if you your genie plus reservation is at the same window as your priority seating you know if when you could at least do them together six months in advance you knew you were going to be eating at you know 11 30 then don't make a fast pass for 11 30 but now you make a priority seating and you don't know what time you're going to have available for your for your genie plus attractions until at least 7 a.m. on the day of that to me that just adds a little bit more stress than it is it does add stress it actually kind of happened to us uh the first time that we went on rise of the resistance the ride kind of broke down in the pre area before we got into the into the ride vehicle so they escorted us off and gave us um uh return tickets thankfully right so when our when we went back and returned as soon as we were able to return it happened to coincide with a reservation we had for Oga's Cantina. And there was nothing you can do because you're in the middle of this ride. We're not going to get off. We came there specifically for that. So we had, we went through that and we were about 20 minutes late for our reservation for Oga's. And thankfully she understood the, the, the woman there understood and, and let us still go through it, but they weren't that thrilled about the fact they said, well, you weren't here at such and such a time. And we were like, yeah, well, we were, the ride broke down. So we had to wait. So see, that's crazy. That just popped into my head literally right now as we were discussing it. That just popped in my head as something that could possibly happen. And you already have an example of when that did happen already. I guarantee you this is going to happen every single day, many, many times. To me, it just looks like chaos. And it, it, it unfortunately, it to me, it is just another example of the the focus that Disney is putting not on guest experiences, not on improving attractions or upkeep with and maintenance. 
it's the their focus is purely on the almighty dollar. I get it. It's a business and you got to be making money, but uh, they make like a billion dollars on every Marvel movie. I don't think they're hurting for cash. OK, they lost it's, a lot last year, though, to, in, in somewhat fairness. OK, fine. So they made less than they anticipated, but I didn't see any, you know, anything going out of business. Or, you know what I mean? Like I, they're, they're not hurting like the American, the typical American hurt. It's it's they're they're making plenty of money just off Disney Plus alone. They're making bukus of money and merchandising, so, merchandising, merchandising. Yeah. <laughs> so and that's just the Genie Plus part. So we haven't uh -oh. even got into part two. Yeah. Uh oh, is right now for the Lightning Lane. <laughs> mm -hmm. The second part is what they're calling the individual attraction selection. Because that's the greatest name ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's super interesting. I, they should call it, you know, the many adventures of money running out of my pocket. Because uh, what, just out of curiosity, what makes these individual attractions any different from the other individual attractions that we just picked on Genie Plus? These are realistically the biggest ones from each park, yeah. the hardest to get on at each yep. park. These are the ones that they're going to bankroll their next project on. So individual attraction selection, that is, uh, I guess you could call it the pay-per-view or pay-per-ride feature that we've all been dreading. Here it is. It's coming. We'll grant you access to the certain high demand rides in the parks. The prices for each ride will change based on the time of year and the demand of that attraction. Consider it kind of the same way hotel prices can fluctuate uh, depending on the season, depending on capa park capacity and things like that. So you may only do this for two attractions per day. So you can't just ride Rise of the Resistance five times, you know, oh, with, with the same this. with the same one time price or is it a price per each? It's no price per ride. So you, but you can only do it two times a day. So you can't do everything on the list. You're only allowed to do it two times a day. You cannot get a refund. You cannot make a change to the ride or the time once it's been selected. So kind of like what we were talking about a minute ago, Tony, if say you want to, you pay extra for Rise of the Resistance, but then you somehow magically pops up on your My Disney Experience app a reservation for Olga's and you want to go there. You cannot change the time of your previously selected individual attraction selection. Wild. You cannot make a change. You can't change the time. You can't change the attraction. Nothing. Once it's all sales are final, basically. And if you miss it, you miss it. You miss it. You miss it. You have it's a one hour window. The, um customer service lines you've been talking about mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. they were long they were I'm, I'm not kidding i should have taken a photo of it you do have a I one think... hour window to get to the attraction of the time that you select so prices have been revealed for some of the paper ride selections and there's obviously price range and it depends on the ride it depends on the time of year it depends on the demand basically so just to give you an example, uh, for the day that this begins, Seven Dwarves Mine Train the, will cost you between $10 and $12 per ride per person. <laughs> Depends on the time to, of year. Let's check out Ron's face there. Yeah, I know. Ron is, uh, <laughs> Ron is having an aneurysm over there. So if I want Genie Plus and I want two rides, we're looking at a minimum of $27 per person, per person, per attraction. The Genie Plus is separate $15 per person per day for that list of 46 attractions. The ones that I'm about to list right now are not on Genie Plus. You cannot get, you cannot use Genie Plus for these attractions. Oh my gosh. It just keeps getting worse. These attractions <laughs> are only individual attraction selection or standby line. That's it. So Seven Doors Mine Train, $10 to $12 per person, per ride, per day. Or you stand in the standby line. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, $9 to $11. Expedition Everest, $7. There was not a range there, so I don't know if it's always seven or what. 
Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Get ready for this. Ron, pull out your wallet, open it up, get your credit card ready. $15 per ride per person if you wish to ride it in a manner other than the standby lane. Yes, $15. And here's the kicker. If you buy this and say you pay $15 for Rise of the Resistance, you don't get early access. You don't get anything special. You don't get like front of the line. You get to go into the lightning lane. Like it's, it's exactly the same access as what you get with Genie Plus. Or like just, fast, it's like the fast pass lane. It's the, the basically line. the fast pass lane. They just changed it to lightning lane. But the only way you access the lightning lane for these high demand attractions is individual attraction selection. And you will pay big time buco dollars to have that opportunity and you likely but must I'm have sure, all members of your I'm party sure with the you daily ticket price has come down uh no ah, ha, ha. Uh, that's that's funny that's a good one the that is the prices of a ticket has never calmed down ever actually so nice try ron but no and they're also you know making you pay to park at the hotels and all that stuff now too so even if you're staying there yeah you know what's unfair sounding about what you're saying already is um I think we may have been able to accept it had it been just a couple of dollars extra a ride. And if, the, if it was just a standard that every extra ride that you want to do is maybe, let's say $5. Okay, $5, that's probably more acceptable. But it depends on the one that you want. It's going to be somewhere between nine, you said nine and 15? The cheapest is $7 for exhibition X. Ex- Exhibition, no expedition. <laughs> Everest. That's a new new yeti that exposes <laughs> things there. <Whoa>. Yeah. <laughs> this is a family show. Let's not talk about that. Expedition Everest, seven dollars. That's the cheapest one, all the way up to fifteen dollars for Star Wars: Rise of the Resistance. And, and Rise is the most expensive that we know of as of now. And those are the only ones that they have listed right now. Those are the only ones so far. I'm look. My guess is uh, early next year, Tron and Guardians of the Galaxy will be added to this list. That's just me making an uh, educated guess. But right now, these are the only ones that are on this list as we record this on the October the ninth. Uh, I, for some reason, I just keep envisioning Debbie Allen from fame walking in front of every line going, you want space? Well, space costs. And right here is where you start paying in sweat. Honestly, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Disney is becoming out of reach for the middle class family. Uh, they are. Uh, it's almost like, you know, only the rich right now can fly themselves into space like Richard Branson or whatever. Disney World is approaching uh, the the same cost as riding a rocket into space. It's uh, it's it's getting close to being out of reach to the middle class family. It's it's crazy. Well, they're, and, they're, and sadly, their way of thinking is, yeah, well, they'll still be able to get on if they wait online. Absolutely, they they they. And look, if they're in line, then you know they're in line for something. Then they're not backing up a line in something else you know uh, my guess it's is they're hoping just enough people pay for this to to keep the standby lines from getting out of control the but thing is we're, we're going to have to pay for this uh, there, there are going to be instances where you really have no choice especially as i said if you travel for the for, for a once in a lifetime trip you're not going to want to miss those experiences it's just so unfortunate that you have to shell out so much more just to do this and to only be able to do it once. I mean, I understand the logistics as to why you can't, but if you can only ride this ride once for, for that amount of, of, it just sounds crazy. And you can only do it twice in a day. So twice in a day, yeah. you're, it, if you have the park hopper, which right now you have to, you know, you can't park hop until after, I think it's, it's either, either one or 2 PM you, you can pay for another attraction at another park. So wow. you could always do, you know, rise of the resistance in the morning and then park up to the studios, or I'm sorry, or park up to Epcot center and do Remy or something. You can pay for that one also, but then you're done. You can only do two per day. 
That's a shame. But, uh, you know, I don't know, man. It's just, it just, uh, Disney is already an expensive trip. And, yeah. and you know, for me, I, I, I don't see myself using, I, I don't know. We'll see. I don't hey, know. Gary, I just did some fast math. So if you have a family of four and you want to use Genie Plus and the selected attraction, whatever it's called, you are looking at between $800 and $1,000 for a five-day trip to Disney World. So sure. And that's so just, just for the, that's just for the park the other entrance yet. for being in the park. Yeah, not even staying at a hotel or anything. No, yeah. that's just 800 for fast entrances. So just tack on an extra thousand bucks to your your already probably four to six thousand dollar trip. Just tack on an extra thousand just so you can use what used to be free with fast pass. I'll say we we took a trip this past March and it was in the middle of the pandemic. And I don't know, guys, the, the customer service that you used to experience versus what we experienced. And, and and I'm I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt that it was because the world was turned upside down and nothing was normal. That that's why we experienced some of the non-magical moments that we did. Um, I'm really hoping the next time I go, I get to see the Disney magic magic that I've come to love and adore. What's your opinion on Disney's Genie Plus service? We'd love to know. Please comment down below. Listen to the complete program on your favorite podcast streaming services, now including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and follow us across social media at WDW Reflections Podcast.